Hey guys, today I have two dynamic text tutorials for you in Apple Motion. These both have like a nightlife theme. So this first one is disco text and it looks like a disco ball spinning around and the text is sort of flashing like the reflections on a disco ball. And the second one here is a flickering neon sign. I'm going to make both of these for you today. Now, typically in these dynamic text tutorials, I do three different techniques, but sometimes I feel like those videos get really long, don't they? Do you like it when I do three? Do you think two is more manageable or would you rather I just do like one at a time? Help me out because I really don't know what the right answer is. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what you guys want to see. All right, let's dive right into that disco text. We're going to start with this motion project and someone once commented they wanted to see my settings in the motion project. So I'm just uh, doing 29.97 frames per second on a 1080 timeline. So we're going to open this up first. Let me save the project because I always forget to do that. All right. The first thing I'm going to do is select my text tool here in the center of the screen. We're going to click into our canvas and I'm going to type disco text. Now this font I'm using is just impact. You probably have this font. I'm going to make the size 70. I'm going to make the alignment centered and I'm going to head on over to properties and reset the parameters on the position. So it's also centered here. The next thing I'm going to do is head on up to the top center of my screen, hit add object, and I'm going to add a camera to switch this project to 3d. All right, next up, we're going to select that disco text and we're going to head on up to the right corner of the Apple motion interface and hit this replicate button. And now we've replicated that text. We are going to head on over to the inspector window. We're going to leave it on rectangle uh, and tile fill, but I am going to change the size of this to much larger. Let's make it real big. And then let's change the number of columns and rows. I'm going to go 10 on the columns and I'm going to go 34 on the rows. And then I'm going to change the tile offset to 70%. Now let's draw our attention to the color mode. Instead of original, we're going to drop down to over pattern and let's arrow down on this color gradient. I'm going to make this first swatch kind of a gray. I'm going to add a swatch in the center here by just clicking on the center of the gradient and I'm going to change the gradient color so that the outsides are like a light gray. The inside's going to be this kind of purple. And then I'm going to draw my attention down to the color repetitions line and we're actually going to keyframe this. So I am going to queue up my playhead on my timeline to the beginning of my project and I'm going to add a keyframe here under color repetitions. I'm going to start it at five and let's head down to the end of my project and on color repetitions, we're going to add another keyframe and we're going to make that color repetitions keyframe value 100. So if I play it back, you see we're getting variations in the colors of the text, which is what we want. Now that we've got our colors all set, the last thing we want to do is find this 3D line here on our replicator and check that box. Now we want to go up to filters, distortion, and sphere. And now our text sure does look like a globe, doesn't it? I'm going to reduce the size of this so that it just feels a little tighter. And now we're going to head on over to our group that encapsulates the replicator. So select the group in the project pane. And this is where we're going to add that spinning effect here on this group. We're going to keyframe it. But before we do that, we need to make a quick adjustment to the anchor point. And this is a very important step. So we want to switch our tool, our cursor from transform to anchor point. And I can do that here at the center of the screen by hitting this drop down, or I can right click in my canvas and select anchor point. So make sure you're selected on group in your project pane, go on over to properties, and we're going to focus on the anchor point here. Let's hit this drop down and we want to change the Z anchor point. I'm going to change it to a negative number here. And now we are going to draw our attention to the rotation property of this group. We're going to keyframe on the Y at the very beginning of our timeline. And I'm going to make this a negative 40 value. 
And then I'm going to head on over to the end of my timeline, add another keyframe on that Y axis, and we're going to make it positive 40. Watch what happens. And there you go. That is your disco text effect. All right, our next tutorial is for this flickering neon light. This one's a lot more steps. I think you're up for it. Let's get right into it. Okay, so here we are in Apple Motion. The first thing I'm going to do is drop in these bricks as our background. Now, obviously these bricks look like they're, you know, in the daytime and that is not what we want. So I'm just gonna throw in a few quick filters here. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is just like blur this out a little bit with a Gaussian blur. Then I'm gonna go up to filters again, color. Let's add some contrast. Let's do a little gradient colorize. A little hue saturation action here. All right, and there we go. We've got some kind of more evening looking bricks going. All right, the next step we're gonna do is head on over to our text tool. We're gonna add some text right here in the center of our screen. And what we want is a script style font, at least for the project that I'm working on, because you know in a neon sign, the letters typically are connected to one another the way that the sign is built. And so you want something where the letters are really going to be like touching each other. So I'm gonna select Sign Painter and in lowercase letters, I'm going to type the word neon. I'm gonna make this real big and just reposition it in the center here. Okay, these letters are actually just for reference. They're going to go away later, but for now we need them because we're gonna head on over to the center of our screen. We're gonna select the BZA and we're going to trace over these scripted letters. guys, while I'm tracing these letters, if you're enjoying this tutorial, let me know by giving me that thumbs up, hitting that subscribe button, and ringing the bell so you never miss a future upload. And then here at the end, I'm just going to add a little pizzazz and do like this underline back and forth thing. All right, and to set that, we're going to click anywhere in our project pane. Okay, this... BZA does look a little crazy, I admit, but don't you worry, we're gonna fix it. So the first thing I'm going to do is reduce my width just a little bit, it's a little thick. And now we're going to go over to this button here, Shape Style. We're just gonna select this icon to get a drop down, and we're gonna arrow down to Traditional, and we're gonna select the 3D brush. So now you can see that our BZA looks almost like a tube of neon lighting, which is definitely exactly what we want, but we definitely have a lot of adjustments to make. The next thing I'm going to do is eliminate my neon sign painter font lettering by just unchecking it in my project pane to get rid of it. And then I wanna really round out the way that this writing looks. So I'm gonna head on over to geometry and watch this. I'm gonna slide up the roundness and it really cleans up our BZA. And then from here, I'm just gonna make a couple little adjustments to give us some spacing. All right, now I feel like we're definitely getting somewhere. Now what we need to do is from the geometry tab, going over here to stroke and we're going to make some adjustments to the way that this neon sign looks. So first let's look at stroke color mode. We're going to select color over stroke. So by default, we've got a lot of boxes here. We've got four boxes. I'm going to delete the two end boxes by grabbing them and just dragging and they go away. And then let's select the second box here and I'm gonna make this kind of more of a teal and then I'm gonna add a box in the center by just clicking in the gradient itself. And so now we're going from pink to purple to teal. This pink one, I'm actually gonna brighten up a little bit. All right, now we need to make multiple copies of our BZA. To do that, I'm going to select it in the project pane, right click and hit duplicate, and I'm going to do that twice. This first one, I'm going to rename lights. The second one here, I'm going to rename lights off. 
and this third one I'm going to rename Glow. So let's first draw our attention to just the light. So I'm gonna turn off the other two copies so we can just focus here. I'm gonna head on up to Filters and we're gonna go to Glow and I'm gonna hit Aura and I'm gonna dial up the outer radius. And I'm gonna like dial down the brightness just a hair. All right, that looks good. Now let's turn that one off and turn on the lights off version so we can focus on this one. In this one here, we're going to be over on the shape tab and then stroke. We're gonna delete these colors from the gradient so we just have one box. I'm gonna select that box and I'm going to change the color of it to iron here in our like little Crayola color box. So that one is done. Let's turn that one off and let's go to the glow. And on this one here, I'm going to select it in the project pane, head on up to filters. We're gonna to go to glow again, but this time we are going to select light rays. And I'm going to dial up these light rays and the glow. And I am going to add one more filter to the glow here. Make sure we're selected on it on the project pane filters. And we're gonna add a Gaussian blur. And we're gonna dial that way up. So it's really fuzzy looking. And now let's turn on all of our versions of the neon light. And that's what we get. So now let's look at this glow. To me, the glow is really um, bright. It's a little too opaque. So I'm going to select it in the project pane, head on over to properties. We're going to go down to opacity and just sort of reduce the opacity. So it's a little more subtle. So there's our neon light, but we want to add that flickering effect. So let me show you how to do that. We're going to be selected on lights in our project pane, go up to behaviors, top center of the screen. We're going to go down to parameter and we're going to hit randomize. So now in our inspector window, we first need to decide what we're going to randomize. So down here on this line where it says apply to, we're gonna hit this drop down, properties, blending and opacity. And then let's change these values here. We wanna raise the amount really high, say around 265. And what I wanna do is draw your attention to my keyframe editor. You can see here what's being animated is the opacity on our keyframe editor. You can, as we change the values here in our inspector window, you're gonna see those changes reflected in our keyframe editor. If you do not see your keyframe editor, head on over here to the center right of the screen, hit these three diamonds, and there is your keyframe editor. Just kind of gives you like a visual representation of what's going on in your project. So now let's change the frequency to 17. Let's turn up the noisiness to one and let's change the end offset to uh, 22. And if you play it back, there's your flicker. Now I wanna draw your attention. When it flicks off, let me just arrow over you're seeing the lights off version of our neon sign because when a neon sign flickers off, like all that tubing is still there. So you definitely wanna make sure you take that step to get that lights off version. But the other thing we're still seeing is the glow, which clearly would not be on the brick if the light was flickered off. So if you remember, let's click on the glow in our project pane, I messed with the opacity already. So if I do the randomize to the opacity, it's gonna override that, that's not what you want. What we're going to do is right click and select group. And now we can change the opacity and the flicker on the group without affecting how we dial down the opacity on the glow in general. So now what I wanna do is head on down to my timeline, find the randomized behavior from your lights element I'm going to select it in my timeline. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna hit copy, and then I'm gonna go up to the group in my project pane that includes the glow. Not the glow itself, but the group. I'm gonna hit paste, and now the randomized flickering should be in sync. And there you go, guys, that is your neon light. So what'd you guys think of these two tutorials? Give me that thumbs up if you enjoyed them. You know, you might not use these tutorials in these exact applications, but I love these exercises because it shows you some of the behaviors and filters maybe you haven't dug into yet and how to use them. And I'm really just here to inspire you to have your own creativity and use these techniques in the way that works 
for you. Let me know again, do you like it if I just do two tutorials in one or three or one or what do you think? I can't wait to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again.